What's up? What's up, everybody? We are getting ready to get rocking and rolling on the next episode of the Extra Mile Podcast. What's really cool is, you know, we had a little bit of a brief run there where we had out of town out of towners on the show, right? We had people from out of the country, we had people from across the country. But now we're coming back to let a few hometown heroes rock with us on the Extra Mile Podcast. So stay tuned for this next guest. Your success is on the other side of your comfort zone. See, that's the difference between me and those other guys. I wanted it more than they did. I wanted it enough to get uncomfortable. I wanted it enough to go the extra mile. Do you want it bad enough? Do you want it bad enough to go the extra mile? That's Woo. fire. It's pretty good, right? Like, I got amped up just listening to that. Right. I'm, I'm like ready to go. When I hit let's, go let's go run. Right. Yep. Hold up, there it is. That's right up your, yeah. right up your alley right I there. I like that. That's like home. <laughs> yeah. So for real, guys, so what's cool about this, right? Nobody knows like going the extra mile more than somebody that's been on the track, been, you know, going the extra mile throughout life in entrepreneurship. Um, but this man has been on the track. He's been behind the wheel going the extra mile. He's been behind the wheel of the entrepreneurship seat for quite a while. So I want you guys to rem come back to the episode with CJ Faison, who has been here on the Extra Mile before, but is coming back to let us know what's changed since that first episode and all the new great things that's happening with him. So, CJ, what's up, my dude? It's been a while, but yeah. it's been good. Yeah, man. So, a lot's changed. A lot's changed for you, dude. This is like last time I was in the <laughs> studio with you was in a different building, like down yeah. the street. Like, that's what's up. Yeah, we just it's had growing. A like, of mics. This, is this your only, like, this is just what this building serves purpose for here? Yeah, so this one's a little bit multi-purpose, but mainly this, right? We got That's the, what's up. We got the Master Networks thing going yep. in the back, but but other than that, it's going to be a lot of content creation in general, That's which is cool. why this studio is available to other people as well. It's my favorite content creation. Content creation. I love He's it. The man. We've, got some, we've had some experts on the show, but you're obviously one of the elite when it comes to creating content, but... You know, Appreciate real quick, that. make sure make sure everybody knows exactly who you are, what you what you specialize in these days. Um, yeah, take them through a little bit of an Shoot. intro. Um, everything. <laughs> so, uh, I've got a YouTube channel. I've got two YouTube channels. One I think it's over four hundred thousand subscribers now. Uh, another one with I think just at seventy thousand subscribers. Uh, I own just. a company called just. Motivated Apparel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I own Motivated Apparel. Uh, I own CJF Properties Ltr. Uh, couple different little entities, a couple holding companies that just are mainly centric around like what I do. Uh, so everything is business wise around me. Yeah. And I, I just, I don't know, you know, I don't do anything except for work. And that's where people are like, Oh, what do you do for fun? I, it is fun. Like life is fun. I don't have to take a break from it. It's kind of nice. So in that aspect, I'm winning. Yeah. Uh, but in the rest of life, I, I like, all of life, I'm losing. Right. I'm losing this race right now. <laughs> like, in, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody else is like, oh, you're doing great. But it's not to where I want to be yet. So, until then, the I story know. keeps, And you it's know, crazy, right? Because people will be like, yo, CJ, you're fucking killing it, man. You're you're crushing it. And you're yeah. like, yes and no. Like, you're like, because at the same point, yeah. you're like, you know, like, you're not where you want to be. You exactly. know, you've come a, a long way from where you were. Bingo. But yeah, I know I get that feeling, dude, because it's, it's like you don't know whether like it's hard to accept the praise sometimes. It man, is. But. but it's it's easy for people like if they're if they're not where you're at. Number one, it's obviously easy for them to hate. But number two, it's easier for them to compare themselves to you, which is not a good scale. Like if you and I compared ourselves to like Bezos, we have a very, very very long road ahead yeah in I'm less than nothing i got nothing <laughs> 0. 0.00001 percent of people will ever do what right. he did exactly but if your if your dreams are that big go for it like yeah. why not yeah it's funny dude because i was like you know tinkering with the idea of, of buying a sports car like like you know like yep. gtr maybe something maybe, fun yeah so I'm looking and man, I'm like looking at a few ads and taking a look at a few cars and then like they'll take a picture of the car and post it for sale because I was going to buy used. I like buying used. Or Absolutely. Whatever. So I see all these other cars that they also have and they're just happen to be selling this one. Yikes. And here I am just like barely like on the edge of deciding I to spend that money that on button. that car. <laughs> and they got all these cars back there. Go ahead and fill that form out. Yeah. We'll contact you in the morning. Yeah. So I'm glad you say that because a lot of people do spend their time comparing themselves to others and therefore make themselves feel like they're not doing something but, but like man we like it's it's crazy to me because we got to find out like what we want like what we want as individuals because I'm 
dude, there's some things that you have that I do want. Right. And there's other shit you're doing yeah. I don't want to do. Yeah, I, I don't you know blame what I mean? you. And yeah. That's, and that's It's okay. all relevant right. to people. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's relevant to everyone's situation. Yeah. That's like, okay, so like, it's weird, but keeping up with the Joneses, no like, no <laughs> pun intended here, but the it. whole key, I do mean it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the whole keeping up with the Joneses thing, yeah. um, you know, it used to be like, the stupid house with the picket fence and all of that. And then now it's like sports cars and vacations. And like, that's how like all of my generation, at least that's how they see it. Like who's got the coolest car. Who's got the coolest. Like, I guess it is about a house too still, but who's got like the coolest vacation, who's spending the most money yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And like, Hey, I'm all about winning, but I'm not, I, I literally do not want to win the short-term game. I want to win the long-term game. Real. That's at least me. Yeah. And you know, it, it is a show. It is a fucking show that we have to, Bingo. That, that we feel like, and I say we, I feel like most of the population anyway, like they have to put on this show and that's why they do things. Like, like if I go on a vacation, bro, I'm going on a vacation because I want the vacation, not because I want right. the content. Yeah. Now, so I, there's gonna be a lot of conflicts in these comments because Hell we're also yeah. big on content creation. Yep. I'm definitely big on all that. Yeah. I think if you're doing something, document it, but don't do something to document it. Correct. Well, like me, it's it's like really weird. I like working, so like what I do. How do I even say this? What I do, every part of my life can be filmed. Right. Therefore, there's a dollar sign attached to it somewhere. Yeah. And it's a pretty special place to be in where I can go on vacation, I can film it to let people live vicariously through me, which yeah. I really do enjoy. Like it's fun. Yeah. Like there's some people who are wheelchair bound that will right. not be able yeah. to do some of the things I do. You can't experience it. I yeah. always remember that in the back of my head. I never take that for granted, but I can go on vacation. I can take them on vacation with me and I can still make money through it. And there's all kinds of people that are like, oh, you make money doing this and that and this and that. And like, when's enough's enough? I mean, it's, it's again, it's all relevant to, it's relevant to the person in the situation. So that's the way I look at it. I'm just, I'm very fortunate, very blessed to be in the position I am. And yeah. there's no, other, there's no other way to look at it other than that I'm very grateful for everything I've done. It's, it is crazy, you know, um, and we'll talk a little bit about this, but like when you were growing up, I mean, obviously you had a, a, you know, enthusiasm for racing. Yep. Right. Did you, I mean, did you have anywhere in your wildest dreams? Did you think you'd be doing some of the shit you're doing today? No, I, I not at all. But, and, and I say that very quickly. No, I knew that one thing is that I liked, I loved the sport of racing. I love the adrenaline rush and everything that comes along with it, except for the political bullshit that you have to deal with in racing. Yeah. No matter what, if you're racing go-karts to NASCAR, you're, there's pol politics and everything. Right. So, but I, I always, always, always was trying to make money. That was supreme over everything because I knew that I'm not Jeff Gordon. <laughs> I know that racing is not going to fulfill a monetary void in my life right right yeah it's probably so, gonna take a lot of money too <laughs> well if i want to continue racing i have to figure out how to make the money to do what i like right yeah. instead of vice versa yeah. making money in racing gotcha. than to do i guess whatever else i i don't know what that is yeah. so but i always knew like even in nascar and stuff i i knew that i i didn't have the talent of like a kyle larson or jeff gordon or something gotcha. along those lines but i knew that if i if i liked what i did enough and i was different enough that i could make it then some opportunities came up and i steered off course because i realized that i can go and do more fun racing like sprint cars like i do now right. and enjoy it 10 times as much and my bank account looks great right instead of like living on a ramen noodle budget like yeah. That was some bad times. And there's nothing wrong with that, man. A lot of people put, put like, the idea of changing course, like, changing your mind. Hey, I'm going to do nothing this. Nothing wrong with it. Like, like we're abandoning a goal. No, bro, I no. just got a different goal. Now I have a different well, goal, well, and things, I'm going to work towards well, something Well, things different. change. Yeah. I mean, COVID right. changes everything. Yeah, speaking of like, that, so we before we started um, recording, we talked about a pivot that you guys did it at Motivated. Let's talk about yep. that a little bit here because, you know, when – when we met last time and you were on the show last time, you were making a move further into the sunglass game. Yep. And, and now that's that's changing course. And let's talk about why that came to be because I think that a lot of people need that kind of uh, insight. Yeah, well, I think the, the whole sunglass industry becomes kind of tacky or uh, maybe not douchey is not the right word, but a little tacky. Okay. Like 
I mean, I mean, it's the same. Like, I don't know why, but like when somebody walks by with like a pair of Oakleys on, for instance, I'm not really impressed. It just means that you overpaid for a pair of sunglasses. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, that's what it means. Right. So, um, but I, I wanted to pivot mainly because I realized I only wear the same pair of sunglasses every single day of my life. Right. Unless there's something so cool that comes out next, I got to have that. Right. So I understood one thing is that I have to wear a lot of clothes. I mean, sometimes I'm changing two or three outfits a day depending on what situation I'm in. So I, I understood that from the very beginning, but I never wanted to realize that. And when COVID hit, I was like, whoa, here we go. It's harder to source sunglasses from Italy and China. And now I can source product from China. It's our own fabric, everything. And it's easier to get. There's more of it. It's just, it, it made more sense. And, and people have to wear seven different shirts a week and, right. you know, seven at different least, pairs of pants. At least we hope. Well, I hope. <laughs> okay. If you're out there, don't be offended by that. But I change clothes every day. Yeah, least. I was going to say, in this weather, you better be changing your clothes. Jeez, man. <laughs> yeah, 80, it was like 99 degrees or something the other day. I was like, yeah, why am I in Delaware? Yeah, it's too I like it. But I was going to say, me too, bro. I, I'm never, like, I love traveling. I love going different places. Yep. I'm always all over the, you know, globe. But, like I'm never gonna move away from no. there. I'm always gonna have roots I, here. Somewhere. I used to shit on Delaware. I was like, oh, it's right? terrible. And I love the people on social media. They're like, hell with Delaware. It's all this and that and the other. And I'm like, you're an idiot. Yeah, you are an idiot. Mm-hmm. We're, you, you're 30 minutes from the beach if you're in the middle of the state. Right. All right. Yeah. You're 30 minutes from the beach. You're two hours from the mountain. You're what two and a half hours from New York City, Philly. You have the mountains, the forest, and the beach, and farmland. And you city, have everything. And, city, yeah. and and before all these tornadoes started happening, that was the only thing we were missing. Now we got tornadoes happening. Yeah. So I'm like, damn, we're in Tornado Alley. Yeah. This is like Oklahoma. It is, it is wild because we didn't, <laughs> this for is years, weird. we didn't have tornadoes here. And now in the last couple of years, we've had. Do you ever remember problems. growing up tornadoes happening here? Or so n- the only reason I remember this is because at the state fair years ago, um, there was a tornado. And I think it was near... Bro, it was I. I, I don't that. ask me why I remember this. <laughs> it was during a Vince Gill concert. Gosh, I, think I don't even know who that is. Damn, I think it was Vince Gill. Might be wrong about that. Jeez. Anyway, my mom and my aunt were at the stadium, and they literally saw the tornado form across the field. Dude, that's sketch. now they were safe. That's sketchy. It was so far off. They were but safe. Still, but she ended. I remember she ended up though. getting a shirt that said, "I survived the Delaware State <laughs> Fair tornado." And so oh, that's man. the only reason I remember <laughs> that or know about that was just because my mom happened to be there. But it's yeah, I think weird, it was like man. the one tornado that we actually had um, accurately and officially documented as yeah. touching down in Delaware. It's weird, man. And now we've had multiple. So the, it is, yeah, it's I bizarre. Mean, I, the one a couple years ago came straight towards my house and then like, oh yeah, by the grace of God, took like a right-hand turn and yeah. just went, yeah, tore we up love, a bunch man. of stuff, A lot of man. our customers get lost their their whole freaking house up in this area. So Gosh, it was, man. It was tough. But, um, but yeah, man, so it is crazy, but I really appreciate Delaware for a lot of the reasons that you mentioned. We're, you know, so close to all the cities. I, yeah. I think it would be great if we had an airport closer. We could just get... Dude, you know, you're telling me I want a yeah. flight like three or four times a week in yeah. or out of here, right. and it sucks. Right. Because you either fly out of Salisbury and pay astronomical prices or you have to travel two hours and you know the whole thing you yeah. you got to leave two hours beforehand so you lose four hours your right. day technically five hours your day yeah. is gone and by the that way sucks. i don't do that if i'm flying internationally i'm definitely going to make sure i'm there two hours ahead of time because i have yeah. missed one of those flights before but i'm the guy that especially if i'm traveling solo i show up with my carry-on and that is it i know you're carrying it's around a lot of good. equipment yeah, yeah. so you can't do that <laughs> usually but, i have like a team of people with me yeah. too so it's like trying I'll to drag like everybody to the airport ahead of time, maybe and that's what's up yeah and i flew out of salisbury the other week I, I showed up 15 minutes before the flight was supposed to take off and like they were like just letting people through the security gate to get into the terminal oh, i'm like shit. yeah but we all got through and like yeah. Four minutes. I know, dude. It's and then like, we went right onto the plane. Always in panic on this side, and then yes. when they get in, they're like, "Oh, call, oh, call yes, everything's collected. good." Yeah. They always get me at airports. I don't know if this is just me, but gosh, damn! If I had, a, well, if I just had the money back, I've spent on them little battery packs. So I have a bag of external battery packs because I always drain the battery. Always drain the battery on my phone. I bet I probably have fifteen, maybe sixteen of those little power pack things that you buy in the yeah. airport that are like 60% charged, right. but it gets me through and they're like 70 bucks a piece. Yeah. And you buy one every single time. Yeah. And they can charge the one that you had before. Right. Or remember to bring it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll leave in a rush or yeah. like it just, it slips. So my now mind. the problem is, is all the USBs have changed to USB-C. So, yeah. so, um, I'm getting rough. 
So Heather had bought me a, like the luggage, the away luggage with the yeah. built-in battery pack or whatever. Hey, that's cool. It is cool, if but it was all regular USB. Oh gosh, <laughs> it was all regular yeah, yeah. USB. So none of my cables even connect <laughs> to it. So well, if you then, found somebody at the airport that needed a charge, you could have jumped them. Right. Right. Yep. So anyway, anyway, so that's our conversation about travel. Um, <laughs> so we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the business too. But um, but yeah, man, it's it's just it's crazy because like I think like you said, a lot of people shit on Delaware. But I think there's a lot of opportunity. I also think that, you know, when you're an entrepreneur and whether or not you're an underdog entrepreneur or you had, you know, cards stacked against you in other ways, but I feel like enough's never enough for the people that like are are climbing this. And I don't think everybody understands that because for uh, not me, really, no. for me, like you said earlier, like people ask me all the time, like, you know, what, so like, for example, I, I don't really work with my main company anymore. I hired a COO there and they're running that. There you go. Right. So that's about a year in the works, but that didn't mean that I was going to go sit on a couch somewhere. Right, you know right. It just means so, you were going to go do something else. Right. It, 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 you know what? I said this. Uh, I, I don't know when I said this. It was the other week. I was on a Zoom call, and I was like, people don't realize their potential, therefore they don't understand it's obtainable. Right. And that, for me, that was so true for so long, bro, because like when people ask me, they, they asked me, was, was like starting a business easy? It's a hard question for me to answer because <laughs> – yeah, it it's really was. For everybody. Well, the, the reason I say that is because, yeah, because at one point in my life, I thought it was impossible, and here I am doing it. Right. So obviously, it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Yep. Right? Yeah. Because I ended up doing what I thought was impossible. And then the same thing goes for like when people ask me what I'm going to be doing five years from now. I'm like, five years from now, yeah. bro, if you go back five years ago, I couldn't even imagine what I'm no. doing today. Dude, so, me neither. Yeah. It's weird when you think about how time changes everything. Yeah. COVID, uh, relationships, uh, everything like it just, just yeah. people change, technology evolves. Yeah. And it heals it's too. Weird. Right? It, 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 it helps. It helps in some things and it hurts in others. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, let's go to, um, your content, right? What yep. is like, what's the main thing that you're doing by way of content for your YouTube these days? What's your main, main thing? Uh, right now it's, um, how do I even say this? I get, <laughs> it depends. <laughs> depends on the day. Um, but I, I, I've been playing this app called Randonautica. Been uh, filming that. Uh, I go still to visit some of the world's most haunted and abandoned places. Have a lot of fun doing that. Um, there's a lot of risk, but there's a lot of reward too. Yeah. So, you know, there's... I'm still waiting for my invite, by the way. Yeah, you dude. Know what I mean? Well, I'll bring my sleeping hey, bag. You bring a sleeping bag, a yeah, pillow. It's a, pink, but... Your uh, motivated water jug, and then I you're set for the night, man. You're all, you're up, all man. good. <laughs> but it's it's weird. Uh, that's on my main channel. Then my vlog channel, like, I haven't really found the direction where I'm going with that yet. It's yeah. just showing people outside of my life. Like, right. I walked in here vlogging. Yeah. And you never know, like... It's truly like a crapshoot in Vegas. You don't know what you're going to get when you log on to my vlog channel. It could be racing content. Right. It could be me talking about how I'm trying to buy a car wash for $2 million, which I'm an idiot to do. Right. Um, it, it just, it's all over the board. Right. And that's what I love about it because there's no direction. When I wake up in the morning, I don't have to go find a haunted place and fly out there. And, and, and it, there's a lot to it. But, yeah. um, you know, the vlog channel, I think is going to take a little bit of a shift actually. Uh, more towards just some of the crazy stuff I do. Like I, I am, I don't film some of that because YouTube kind of like looks down on that type of content. Like, like dude, there's some times where I'll put like an explosive in a car and shoot it and watch it blow up. Like I love that. I love pyrotechnics, like fireworks blowing shit up. Um, <laughs> but you can't put that on YouTube because it's a dangerous type of content. So you really walk a fine line with the whole YouTube thing and it'll, tr it'll come, it'll come back around one day, yeah. but they have to kind of push the limit and then they draw back again. So that is what it is, man. But I enjoy the hell out of it. I really do. Yeah. So what's funny is you talk about your content kind of being all over the place, but the one common denominator with it is that it's always you, right? So yeah, exactly. So my, my thing is like my big takeaway from what you're saying right now is you got so many people on the other end of this camera right now that are, or on the other end of this audio that don't know what, to record and and what to put out there as far as content yeah and here you have you recording <laughs> yeah. everything right yeah. like literally there's no it's, limits so that there's it's different so what would you say to those people that those people that are out there right now that are like oh i don't know i just don't know what what to do where to get started about producing content in general for 
their selves, their personal brand. I don't want to say their professional brand. Okay, I want to say their personal brand. But them brand. personally. Yeah. Uh, I, I always find it interesting. I used to find it interesting. Um, still do kind of. I don't have time to necessarily like jump into the back end of people's lives and like see what's going on. Right. But I always think it's interesting. Like I watched this one guy. He drives a tractor trailer for a living. Now I went down a rabbit hole for like 45 minutes on this guy's <laughs> channel. I'm like, I used to kind of be in the trucking business and yeah. I had no idea that like this happens here, that happens there. It's, it's very weird. Uh, but people really enjoy seeing other people and the way they live their life. For real. It doesn't matter. I don't care if you think you have the most boring job ever. Yep. I always said this and I, I joked around about this a couple years ago. I said you could be a janitor, start a YouTube channel, and probably make it faster than you could if you went to like a specific genre and and focused on that. Because, my gosh, you're always finding something weird in the trash, or you're always cleaning up a crazy mess that people would never believe, or something happened. Here's the chemicals that I use uh, to clean a bathroom. Here's my top three scrubbers. There's so much content, but people don't open their mind to the reality of like what they do is actually interesting. Like I find it very fascinating to watch people do what they do. Yeah, it's just weird to me. It's it's huge, and we see that right. There's a there's a couple people locally that like literally just stay at home moms that are creating content around organizing their dressers and Dude. closets and shit. And if they monetize it on YouTube, your your paydays are amazing. It's wild, right? Because, but when we think about it, right, we think our lives are so normal, right? Because they're our lives. Our lives are not normal to nope. other people. There exactly. are people, like, for example, look at the two of us, right? Like, we might have the same haircut, but bro, I'm 35 years yep. old, you're 27. I've got yep. two, I got a, a, my daughter's about to be 17 years old. Really? I've been married for almost 16 years, so I'm going to screw that up. Um, but Y'all want to edit that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so my point is, is like our lives are totally different. There's going to be some things that are similar, but your life, right, when I watch your content, that's a whole different life yep. than what I'm living every single day. Absolutely. So that's what people get excited about. They yeah. want to peek into the lives of, of the the normal shit, right. too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, what? to me, that that's, gotta, that's cool. And, by the way, the guys, good, let's bad, go ahead and ugly. get that janitorial show started real quick. And if you could just go ahead and copyright that real quick. I um, would. <laughs> I'd reserve the channel right now. No, I, I, actually, I would, I that's dude. That's brilliant, by the way. It's just, it's different, man. People want to see what other people go through in life. And for me, um, I don't, I haven't put everything on there, but I'm really starting to just open up my life and show everything the good the bad the ugly you know yeah. it, it sucks because you feel very vulnerable like letting millions of people watch something that you are kind of embarrassed to you know mm-hmm. announce or right. maybe you lost a deal or maybe uh, maybe your business failed there's somebody who can get something out of it yeah I like, don't know. It's but it's a tough see deal. That stuff more than anything, yeah. right? And that's well, what's it's, always it's, it's, it's like scripted shit on TV right. is terrible. Yep. Like you can tell it's scripted. Like when they go and buy these like storage lockers or whatever. Like what? Right. <laughs> Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. It's I weird. mean, you think take take a show like the Kardashians, right? For example, right? The reason their show and the reason why like everybody tuned in was because of how imperfect their lives actually were. Bingo. Right, but that looks great from the outside. Right, from the outside in, it's like, oh man, I, I mean, they had different problems life. than we all had. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, their their problems are fixed by a lot of money too, yeah. so they have a lot of it too. So that that helps. Yeah, but tremendously. You know, like, so th- that's the thing is like it's it's the imperfections that yeah. are really you know intriguing for people, right? Because when we sit yep. here and we pretend that everything's perfect, well, then there's nothing to see then, is there? No. Dude, I mean, on my YouTube channel, people are, are about to see a side of my life that they probably didn't really understand goes right. on. And that's why I try to open up. Like, if I go and visit, like, a, a real estate deal that I'm trying to buy, like, commercial-wise, I don't, I don't, I don't mess with, like, residential, but um, <clears throat> if I go and try to buy a commercial deal, I'm not, I'm going to, I start taking the camera along because then I record the place. I can go back and look at them. Very visual. Mm-hmm. But not only that, but hopefully somebody out there, they might be looking at buying something and, and I can tell them a mistake that I made. Yep. It's like, why not? We actually did that on a few on a, our, our most recent residential real estate flip, mm-hmm. but we documented it, put it out there, showed everybody exactly the process, what, it, what we went through. Somebody's going to get something out of that right. though. 
Absolutely. I mean, let's say you get 100,000 views on it or it's 10,000 views, whatever it is. Right. What if one person sees it and it did something for them? Yet again, you made content. You had fun doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing where everybody gets mixed up in is there are a lot of content creators right now that are miserable doing what they're doing when if they were to get less views and do what they enjoy, it's so much more fulfilling. Like right. I thoroughly enjoy this and it would be easier to be consistent with it. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Cause you like doing this shit. Yep. Right. And so exactly. the consistency is going to ultimately win because you're going to be doing more of what it is you like to do, yep. which means there's going to be more content to put out, which Bingo. means more people are going to see it. In well, the and run. it's just more natural. Like I, I see people on social media all the time. Like I, I take pride in this. I had, uh, I did a fan meetup in Philly and, um, the fan meetup, uh, this one guy came up to me and he's like, man, my wife and I, we watch your videos all the time and you're the exact same person in person as you are in your videos. And that's the thing. If you're acting, that's a completely different person. If Tom Hanks walked in this room, no shade on Tom Hanks. Love you to death, buddy. Um, you know, Castaway was amazing. Um, but he walks through this door. You really, truly don't know him. Nope. Because he is an actor in a movie portrayed in different ways. Yep. He could be good in one, bad in the other. You know, it's just, but people on YouTube, it is what you see is what you get. And that's like, I just talk to the cameras. I'm talking to you. I talk like this right. all the time. Yeah. There's no different. You you will not meet me and be like, oh, that was different. He is not the way he is on his videos. Like, it's just, well, I'm loud. I'm like, obnoxious. If I pretend fun. to be somebody else, even for just the exchange between you and I, let alone on a camera. Bingo. Now, you're even if you decide whether you do or do not like me as a person, no matter what, that decision's based on something what, that wasn't real. Bingo. So you either didn't like who I'm really, I am not, or yeah. you did like who I who am are, not. Exactly. <laughs> so you got a 50-50 chance right. of when somebody really meets you. Yeah. And yeah. that's like the problem. Like there, there's this one girl I know, uh, not going to call her out on, on names, but I'm, I'm friends with her. And, uh, you know, she started uh, TikTok and, and she's doing okay on TikTok. But the, the acting that she is doing, she try, like she just started a YouTube channel. She's like trying to transition into YouTube and it's just not working. Right. And I'm like, I, I tried telling her, I was like, she came to me for advice. And right, she's, rightfully so. I guess. <laughs> I just, I don't know. It's just natural like what I do on camera. It's just who I am where she is acting and she changes her voice in the TikTok videos from what you see on YouTube. So again, like she is like, look, I mean, it's almost like she's like 12, like drank 12 Red Bulls and she's like super active, like very blondish and all this kind of stuff. And it's, it's very funny content that she puts out. But then when she transitions to YouTube, she's a, she's not that same person over wow. on YouTube, but She's trying to show you her life, her house, like you said, like kind of like grooming the house uh, yeah. and getting it all clean. And it's like, who is this person? Right. And we laugh about it now because she's changed her content on TikTok. She's getting less views and stuff like that. But now, and that's like what I've seen is like people on TikTok have a hard time transitioning to YouTube. Yes. And I would say less than 1% of people will ever be successful of taking those followers, transition them over to YouTube because... You know, she has a cult-like following on TikTok, mm -hmm. and it's these younger girls and right, stuff right. like that. And she's very funny. I don't want to take anything away from her at all, uh, but she's finally getting it now. We're like, hey, you be the same person on both platforms, and no, there's no confusion there. Right. It, it's like two different people. Yeah, that's and that's the big thing, right? It's just, it's just authenticity and transparency, yeah. right? Because I think the two of them have to be present because one, obviously, you, you want to be the true version of yourself, but then yeah. there are so many things that I think that we naturally want to hold back that really, A, we shouldn't feel embarrassed by in the mm -hmm. first place. Brandon and I were talking about this stuff earlier, but it's like, you know, we, we, we are embarrassed by things that we shouldn't be embarrassed by, Yeah, right? We're going to take losses in life. We're going to take losses True. in business. Big ones. We're going to take, yeah. and, and people understand that. So when you, like I said before, if you put on a show that you're perfect, well, then there's nothing to see. Yeah, right? exactly. So like, you've got to pair the authenticity with the transparency. Stop trying Bingo. to be authentic and hiding stuff. Yeah. Like don't, you're going to do a house tour, but you're not going to open that one door because you got all your 
shit crammed in there. Right. Yeah, you just spent an hour before the video just, that's like the junk drawer, you right. know what I mean? Like, yes, exactly. I'll open my junk drawer. I don't care. <laughs> that's like, right. I'll Let's show find you. out like what's in here. Rusty well, that's ass a, that's pair of scissors. Video. I should do that. Let's explore the junk drawer. Coming to YouTube very soon. <laughs> CJ Faison's junk drawer. I'm not, I'm not sure we need to go in there. Phew. Might be some skeletons in the closet. That's hanging a good around. One, dude. That's a good one. So, so, all right, let's get back to business a little bit. All right. So how does your content and motivated, like really tied together? How does that, how is that working? How do they complement each other? Uh, it goes hand in hand. Yeah. So, um, you know, one, b- both of them are monetized. Obviously YouTube is monetized, obviously make money off apparel. Correct. Um, so it was really weird. Actually, I, I never, I didn't create this brand. Right. I bought it. Oh really? Yeah. So Let's go well, back to 2000. Well, good find because that's fucking yeah. fitting as hell for you. Exactly. That's what everybody always like. You're so motivated, so motivated. And back in 2013, I was sponsored by um, Motivated Eyewear. Okay. All right. And I had, uh, they didn't see the value in me as much as I saw in myself. And I had a problem with it. And I kind of got my ass on my back. And then I went and started a company called Real Eyewear. Gotcha. It was it was a very petty thing for me to do, but <laughs> you know, hey, at the time it seemed right, and I was like, I always want to make money. I was like, it's a good idea, all that. So anyway, the company got sold off to a guy in California. The guy in California, he ran it. He was, I guess, tired of it, didn't want to do anything else with it, and uh, we started talking. And um, he said, Hey, uh, are you interested in buying Motivated? And I don't know what prompted him to. Uh, message me i have no it's just the way the world comes together sometimes and i'm like i don't want to say this but i was overly excited i was like yeah i'm I'm pretty interested i stretched out over a couple of months like i normally do i'm not going to show too much interest there's like a science behind some of the stuff that i do anyway i bought it like three or four months later uh then i changed it from sunglasses to this but how this complements each other is this is i i you will not catch me without one of my shirts on right it's it's like this. So, and I, I'm gonna clip this <laughs> this one clip here. But race car drivers in the racing community are the weirdest people ever. Now you're asking why? Yeah. They will not wear their own shirt. They're too cool to wear their own shirt. So so instead, now hang on a second here. Instead, I'm gonna go wear one of my friend's shirts. With his sponsor's logos on that shirt and we'll rock it through the pits because we're too fucking cool to wear our own shirts. I don't give a shit. They don't pay my bills. I'm not I, if if a fellow driver wants to shit on me for wearing my own shirt, guess what? He just spent more energy laughing about me. I walk by the pits and I'm yeah. like, I'm I'm just like, dude, it's a weird dynamic in racing. It's does that make any sense? Let me ask you that. Like you're gonna go and let's say we're drivers, right? Yeah. My sponsor, Velveeta. Right. All right. Your sponsor. I'm just staying bright side. Okay. Yeah. There you go. And I'm representing your sponsor. You're representing mine. It's not though. Like, if it was like an unspoken camaraderie thing, I think it is. Or, but or, I've never okay, been told so, about it. So, so that's it though, right? If it's an unspoken like camaraderie thing, then maybe it's okay. But if it's like you said, it's cheesy to wear my own shirt, then that's some bullshit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because. Because I yep. get the support of your your people, the other guys. That's cool, but to not wear your own shirt because you feel it, like that's cheesy. Well, I'm well not here's the thing: if if it didn't have any of that guy sponsors logos, but it was just like right, Bobby Jones. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, but when it's got the race car and right. show, like, and then, what yeah. are you doing? You're not getting it. Yeah, but I, again, yeah, it's crazy. It is an interesting dynamic because I never thought about exactly. that. Exactly. But it's kind of like me taking my personal vehicle, right? Which I have a company, right? And then using carvertize exactly. on my vehicle to right. sponsor somebody else's shit. Like you don't have your own business to <laughs> right. represent. Like, right. are you kidding me? Yeah. It makes That's no exactly sense. That's exactly what you were saying. I was like, yeah, it's just like me taking my truck and representing somebody else's Yeah. Business, so. It's like me wrapping my truck like yours is and then you slapping motivated on the side of your right. like. It just yeah. doesn't make sense. I get it. Like you want to pat each other on the back or whatever. That right. that's cool. But I never understood that. And I was always against that. Like I've worn my own racing shirts. I don't really care. Yeah. I really don't. Because yeah. at the end of the day, there's people who paid to be on my race car and on those shirts. Therefore, right. they deserve to be announced that way. Right. Like why am I going to represent somebody else's sponsors and everything? Right. But you'll never see me without my own merch on. And I get some people at the track. They're like, oh, he wears his own company's clothing. Of course. 
That'd be like the the CEO of uh, Chevy driving a Ford. Right. What? It would be exactly. It makes that. no sense. Yeah. Like so, it goes hand in hand. So in my YouTube videos, I do a lot of things with Motivated. I every order that you ever order from Motivated, you are getting more than what you pay for every single time. And how I do that is this: is I, I open up a box one time I ordered offline, and it had like a bunch of little stuff, not just a sticker. Like when somebody sends me a sticker, honestly, it just goes in the trash to me. Some people stick it on the wall, on the door, on the car, whatever. Um, but I wanted something that I could give people that they're gonna wear as well. So, uh, you know, like the silicone wristbands yeah, and stuff, yeah, yeah. we give one of those a sticker. Sometimes I'll throw in like a hat. I'll even throw on a t-shirt every once in a while. I'll walk through the picking and packing stations and I'll be like, here, put this in that order there. Cause I'll go find out what size shirt they ordered. Right. I'll go get another one. I'll take that out of them door, put it in there yeah. because I want people to be pleasantly surprised yeah. whenever they open up something. Now That's we right. don't do it. We do the wristbands and the stickers and all that for every order, but yeah. we don't. And, and I autograph every single order personally i don't sit there with a stamp none of that bullshit i sign every single order now sometimes i have to sign thousands of cards a week but again it's about growing a brand that has so much more potential than yeah. than what i can bring to the right. table that's it yeah. so like when they when they purchase motivated they get way more than what they ask for and then when they watch my videos i give them more than what they ask for and how i do that in a video is pretty simple i'm going to entertain them and I, I'm, I guess I'm blessed to, for some people think I'm naturally funny. I don't know where they get that from. Uh, <laughs> they think I'm charismatic. I don't know. I'd say stupid things in videos. But what they get is an entertainment packed video that it just kind of really can't be, can't right. really be touched on the internet for what we do at least. Right. Now there's a lot of funny creators out there and you put me up against them. They would knock me in the dirt every time. But uh, my friend Sonny and I, whenever we film together, just that chemistry is there. When chemistry is there, you can capitalize on that, dude. Yeah. And that's what we do. We're just we're ourselves. We're goofy. We're fun. Yeah. I don't no, know. I really like what you said about the motivated thing. And it really, even with your content, too. And I know that that question kind of evolved because you, you talked about bringing, basically bringing way more value than what people are paying for, right? And that should be the goal of any business owner. owner is should be. No matter how much you're charging for your service, product, whatever, it really should not be as much as what you're delivering in by way of value of your quality and your product and service, right? right. So like we should always be over delivering on that. Like I talk about this all the that. time, but in my roofing business, right? If you ask me how much we should be charging per square, should be $2,500 easy per square, right? Now we're usually in the five to $600 a square range, but that's because in my opinion, Good we're, grief. bro, like that's it to me though. Like I want to make sure that I'm bringing so much value, right? We're still, makes sense. One of the, we're the, one of the most expensive people in this area, right. but we're bringing way more value. So I can look at a proposal from another competitor. I could be at 15,000 for a roof right. and a competitor could be at 12, right? And I can look at the homeowner and be like, they're charging you way too much. My, meanwhile, I'm three thousand dollars more, right? Yeah. Be like, what do you mean? So how do you like, justify that? Right. So they'd be like, what do you mean? I'd be like, well, for what they're charging, I'd probably be at nine, for that, right? Because I'm bringing so much more. And now, what am I going to get? I'm going to get them looking at the details, and then they're going to understand. Wait, okay, you're using this, he's using that. You're using this, you're he's using that. You're doing this, he's doing that. Yeah. The answers right? are in the details. Right. That makes sense. So yeah, so I got that's you. The thing, right? Like, if we can bring more in value with our business than we're charging, then we're going to win. They're going to win. Yep. Right. Which means we're going to win in the long run. Yeah. Every single I see time. that. So I love what you're doing. I love the fact that you're still like the personal touch is so overlooked today, especially yeah. because we've gotten into a world of automation. Bingo. Right. And what's super cool, like you talked about it when you brought up Tom Hanks, is like we're taking what once was only able to be captured through lunch meetings, coffees, um, drinks after work yep. um, and conferences, meetings, whatever. Now, through video content, we're able to scale that same amount of effort. So the exactly. people that are watching your content have built rapport with you. Right. They know C.J. Faison. Yep. And if they see you walking down the street, they can walk up and get the same C.J. Faison that they've known and yeah. watched for years. Dude, I love Adam Sandler, but yeah. I've never met him in person. Yeah. But I'm almost certain he is probably not the same person I see on the movies. Yeah. Again, it's, it's, it's an act. Yeah. You know, they're we did actors meet Jerry for a reason. Did you really? Yeah. How, how was he? Was he the same or different? He was super cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, we were in New York City. A lot, of, a lot of celebrities are, though. We were at a, a diner, and me and my wife are sitting there with my kids, and we look over, and we're like, is that 
Jerry Seinfeld? Yeah, what are the odds? Like, like, that's cool as shit. I love him, it. It was him and, uh, gosh, what is the other comedian's name? Colin Quinn um, was in, like, uh, Grown Ups. He was the guy that, oh, like, gotcha. ran the food truck or the lunch right. truck or whatever. Anyway, so cool as that's hell. Cool. My girls went up to him, talked to him, told him. And that's so cool, my, though, my man. My oldest daughter made him laugh. Made Jerry Seinfeld laugh. Well, he's so a I was comedian like, too. Yeah, so yeah, she you're gonna hold good. on. Yeah, I was gonna say you're gonna hold on to that forever. <laughs> you damn right. Forever. I, I, that'd be my Instagram bio. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So dude, it's it's awesome. You're doing a lot of freaking really cool things. A lot of stuff yeah. that you know from the outside, like you said, is like like super impressive. And I know it's not gonna be enough because you're super motivated and you're still yeah, true. You know, chasing it all. Um, let's talk about something that's a little bit you know closer to the heart. A little yep. bit. You know, I know that. Um, you know. People see uh, all kinds of challenges throughout their goal setting, throughout oh, their yeah. lives, right? Sure. And ever and, changing challenges yeah, too. Yeah, man. So, and, and we can really get knocked off our saddle. Sure. Right? Quick. And you experienced that this past year. Oh yeah. In, in a very hard way, um, in a surprising way. We yeah. Had no clue this was coming. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about it because I, I, from the outside, man, I'm super proud of you because of the way that you've been able to let um, your father's legacy live on through what you're doing. So oh, yeah. let's talk about that a little bit. You you lost your father last year, correct? Uh, this It was this, uh, three months ago. Three months well, ago. Well, technically so. like two and a half months man, or something. It flies. Jesus, yeah, it does. It like, I feel like it was just last week. Yeah, You know, sure, it, it all it was really weird. So I, I got to say this. one. This was one of the weirdest things I've ever been through. Um, so my dad and I are, or, I mean, we still are technically, but we're, we were extremely close. We yeah. did everything together, hunt, fish, race, uh, repeat, uh, we go to eat together, everything. I mean, there wasn't very many times where you saw one of us without the other. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and my dad, like he was, he was a very, um, how do I say this? He was a very you got to pull your own weight type of person, yeah. and I've heard so many people before they talk about their dad and stuff like that. Oh yeah, he made me work for it and all that kind of shit. Like uh, my dad, like literally busted my ass all of my life, yeah. my entire life. You and talked he never, about that on the episode the last time. Yeah, he know, never like he something. even up to the day he died, he never let off. Like he was always busting my ass about something, but in a very good way and in a helpful way. Um, he would see me do something in business and purposely let me fail and cost money just so I would learn a lesson. And I was like, dude, why don't you tell me I could have saved like 10 grand? I just, this was so stupid. Or, you know, we lost three grand or yeah, I would always come to him. I'm like, help me out. Like, and he always wanted me to figure it out on it on my own. So, um, priceless. I said this in that last podcast, if I lost it all and had to restart, I know for a fact I can rebound and probably do even better. I'm doing right now. Yes, sir. Uh, the only reason I believe that is because I live by a quote: "This life happens. Uh, you know, it doesn't happen to you; it happens for you. Yeah. Everything yeah. doesn't matter what it is. Everybody's timeline's different. Just because another 27 year old's living in a nine million dollar mansion, like shout out David Dobrik, like you're the fucking king of YouTube, like you know what I mean. But I can't compare myself. I'm in a different situation. Everybody's in a different situation. Very easy to judge. But my dad was my best friend. And, um, again, when I say we did everything together, I I really meant that. Like there was not many times where you didn't see us together, but, um, in the same token, I started working for my dad when I was seven, I was fired when I was seven. Um, I had to work for free the entire summer to earn my job back for when I was eight and he had the last laugh. I never got another paycheck till I was 15. <laughs> so like I was cutting coupons, selling in my grandmother's front yard on Sundays. People thought we were like really poor, like needed something to eat. So I think they just felt bad and would like buy coupons. I didn't get the concept at the time. I just thought like, holy shit, this came for free in the mail. I'm gonna cut it out, put it in bags. And then I'm gonna like sell the bags for like five bucks. They may have saved like 40 cents with all these coupons they bought for $5, but I think they just felt bad. Yeah. That's the kind of entrepreneurship I've always been involved in, but my dad always encouraged that. He would never help me get started. Yeah. He would never guide me, but he would always encourage me to at least do something. And, uh, you know, when I lost my dad, uh, the, the day that, it, that he died, it was a Thursday, and I'll never forget this. Um, he... Uh, was going into uh, emergency surgery at that point. Um, you know, cancer had spread all through his body. And I will say this, uh, like, 
if you don't believe in, in God or anything like that, like that's on you. But what I experienced was timing that day was ungodly. Like it was, it was crazy. Um, I got a call from a six, two, nine number and I never, ever, ever answer my phone (laughs) ever. Not if I, not unless like your name is saved in my phone, I'm not answering that thing. I answered and uh, she said, hey, I knew my dad. My dad was in the hospital, but I had to run the right. auction. Right. So um, she said, hey, this is such and such a nurse at Nanticoke Health or, or Title Health down there in Seaford. Um, your your dad wants you to get here as soon as you can. Oh, and I'm like, okay. So I immediately jump in the truck. I, st- I can tell you every, and this is no bullshit, every stoplight from Felton, Delaware to Seaford was green. It was green, 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 green the whole way down. Now, if you ever travel down 13, you know that is a fucking gauntlet mm-hmm. of stoplights. Um, every one of them was green. I got to the hospital. I found a park right up front. Very weird. I go into the hospital, and I go up to the third floor, and I swear to you, as soon as the doors opened, I felt like I was on a movie. The doors opened. They were rolling my dad's bed into the um, the elevator, and I'm like, Whoa, that's my dad. And she's like, okay, well, come with us. And I I looked at my dad, and I knew that what was going on was not good, but he was very calm about it. Like, he he was preparing himself to go. And uh, anyway, he goes, We I don't even know why. This is during COVID restrictions, right. too. Oh, they crap. let me go down into the operating room waiting area, and... Um, they're like, we're going to do this surgery on your dad and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, what are the risks and all this kind of stuff? And, um, and the doctor really didn't have time for that. Like, it was like time sensitive to go and do yeah. this. And, um, the doctor came up with a clipboard and said, um, if, uh, if you need blood from, you know, another person, will you, are you willing to accept it? And my dad, he looks over at me and, you know, it was like confirmation, like, should I do this or no? And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's okay, dad. Like sign away. And he, he signed it. And, uh, dude, I looked at my dad and him and I stared into each other's eyes for like five seconds. We didn't say a word, but so much was being said oh, right yeah, then. Sure. And, uh, I knew what I had to do and I, I couldn't come to grips with, with doing it. So he goes into surgery. Uh, he aspirates, so they had to put a tube down his throat. They put a tube down your best friend's throat. Like mm. you're up there uh, in the um, in the ICU now, and I'm I'm looking at him. Now the auction's starting in probably 20 minutes. I'm not gonna be able to make it back up to Felton. I got a great staff there, and uh, from this point till when he passed was the most surreal moment of my entire life. I'll never forget it. I, uh, you know, the doctor came in and said, Hey, listen, we're going to, we're going to keep him very sedated and we'll evaluate it in the morning. And, uh, he's like, you're not allowed to stay in here now or anything like that. Just let him be, you know, tell him that you're here or whatever, at least. And, and, and all that. So yeah, I, I research, uh, whispered down there to him and I just gave him some encouraging words like, Hey pop, you got this, you got this. So I got out to tied to the hospital I get to my truck. It's a black lifted GMC truck. And, um, I could not get in there, get in my truck. I've never felt this way. It felt like I had 5,000 pounds of weight on my, on, on like my waist. I, it, it was like something was not allowing me to get in that truck. So I'm sitting in the fucking parking lot and people are walking by me. Nobody's saying a word, nothing. And I'm like, I can't even get my own truck. And I'm weirding out at this point because I'm like, what am I supposed to do? And in the back of my mind, I knew what I had to do. Finally, I, I get in my truck somehow. I start driving to Felton, and I just started talking out loud to God and my dad if he was listening. And I was like, if this is your will to take my dad, take him and stop letting him suffer or have a miraculous recovery. I got to the auction. I wasn't there 10 minutes. My stepmom called me up and said, hey, I'm, I'm taking Logan up to, to see dad. Uh, the doctor called and said, we, we should probably do this before it's too late. So they went up there. Um, I immediately turned right back around from the auction. Uh, My little sister luckily got to spend probably about an hour with him and uh, sitting there in the room. And I, I, and it was just like, it was the weight of the world was on my shoulder. I knew what I had to do. I knew I had to do it. And it was the toughest thing I ever had to do. You know, I I sat there, I talked to him, I talked to him and, and, and just told him I loved him and, and told him everything that I, 
could think of at that time. And um, it was me, my grandfather, my stepmom, my little sister, my older sister in, in the room. And uh, the nurse is like, you know, we've got him on a lot of medication, and he's not going. And I've heard stories like this before, but I've never been a part of it. And uh, I was like, Phew. I just knew what I had to do, and I didn't want to do it. I was too selfish to re- to basically bend down there and, and whisper what he needed to hear from me. And um, I finally did it, and I, I basically reached down there, and I whispered in Dad's ear. I said, Dad, I love you. I said, uh, you know, out of all the people, he was more concerned about how I would react when he died because we were so close. Yeah. And I said, it's going to be okay. I said, I'm going to be okay, and I love you. Not 10 seconds later, flat line, gone. Jeez. It's the most surreal feeling I've ever been through in my life. You've never felt anything quite like that dude and uh you know what do you, what do you do you know he was suffering mm-hmm. and 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 i had people tell me that you know and a lot of people were coming up and like he was really worried about you like how you would react to it you know everybody else was pretty good you know everybody's close with him but you know him and i we was just we did everything together so it was rough it still is i think about it every single day every time every time i get in a car i look up at the sky and i wink at him with my left eye like he used to do to me it's just the thing i do every single day it's repetitive yeah. And I feel like he's still here, even though he's not, but right. he's here in spirit. Or at least I, I live for him. Yeah. And that's what I do. And and I put this on Facebook. I uh I said, uh, my dad and I we had a private bucket list of things that him and I wanted to do. And we 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 chalked we, we checked every single box, dude. We were so fortunate. We did everything on that list. The only thing you wouldn't do that was on mine was skydiving. He ain't jumping right. out of a perfectly good airplane, just not him. Yeah. Um but I put on Facebook, I was like, you know, everything I do from this point forward is just a bonus. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I could fail, and I've already still done everything I was supposed to do in life. Yeah. And so it's, to me, dude, it's rough. Yeah. It, I can't say, I, it takes a lot of courage for me to even, like, talk about it to people and stuff. Yeah. But you know, I feel that people really need to understand that, you know, it it's not happening to you, it's happening for you. Yeah. My dad died at, uh, at what I would consider to be a young age for a right. reason. Yeah. Maybe I don't see it until I'm 80. I don't know. Right. You know, it's 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 hard to find the right words after somebody goes so deep on our show like this. And yeah, no, yeah, no. I'm very Let, great. First yeah. of all, I'm very grateful for you opening that door and being transparent. We talked about that a little while ago. Yeah. But man, you know, um, I, I've really seen, you know, what you talked about, right? Like your dad not letting you, like letting you fail at things on right? purpose was such a huge move for him right because and for you like big. such a big investment like how hard was it watching you do the wrong thing knowing it yeah but knowing that the lesson was not going to be learned as well if i intervene and say hey don't do that here's why right versus hey i just blew 10 grand and now i have to recover from it right right but now yeah. that 10 grand hit will live with you forever forever you know dude. what i mean and so yeah. When I say to you, bro, like when I, and I'm, I'm, you know, obviously outside perspective and I'm not, we're, you know, I, we go back a little ways, but yeah. we're not super close or anything like right. that. But watching you the way that you have, like he's always going to live on through every single time that you overcome and go over one of those mistakes the way that you did. Yeah. I appreciate you know what I'm that. saying, man. Yeah. Like, so for me, like this is, this is something that obviously, you know, is, is a very painful thing to go through, Oh yeah. but death is certain. Yeah, like we're all going to die, is dude. Certain. We, that's the one guarantee that we have, right? Yep. And you know, to to pretend it's not is to set us up for failure. Yep. Exactly. And so I can't imagine what you went through, but I also hearing you tell the story can't imagine um, the sequence of events being for what they were any better than the way that they could have played out if he was going to go regardless. Absolutely. Right? So like yep. that was huge for both of you. And it sounds like the way that it played out, like he needed it just as much as you needed yeah. that comment, that discussion. And me telling him that was probably super therapeutic for me. At least like it was right. very, you, I mean, again, you know, I, you hear the story of so many people right. losing their father, their mother, their parent without having, maybe they didn't even talk at the time. Right. Right. Like, so that's rough, dude. Right. I can't even imagine, right. Right. but it's like this though. You know, I look at it like this. I, I I got the opportunity to speak with my dad one last time before he died. Yeah. Right? There's so many people that their sister, their brother, their mom, their dad, uncle, whoever, dies in a car accident. Right. 
maybe they died on good terms, yeah. but they still died in a car accident or, you know, something very super traumatic. It just, right. I, I can't imagine that. And, yeah. and that, that is a big fear of mine is losing a family member like that. But the way that my dad passed was probably the, the best way for him and for me mm. not to be selfish to right. any of my family, sure. but, um, just everybody in the family knew we were, we were extremely close, man. Yeah. So that, that, to me yeah of course and all your, was, all your followers too i mean he was yeah. in a lot of your content yeah you know from, yeah I, I was at so, him in there i took yeah. him on a ghost hunt you know yeah. what i mean and and uh, i remember at least I, I saw you play quite a few pranks on him at that. oh gosh man <laughs> so oh uh, there's one i want to say real quick so he was on <laughs> yeah. the, he I, I used to try to prank call him and he would he'd always know it's me somehow i had no idea why i'd change my voice i'd fucking practice like all week for this one 20 second <laughs> moment to get him and uh it would never work so finally, I was like, I'm going to get his ass this time. So uh, I had, um, I, di I didn't really mean to do this, but I had somebody call in and act as, you know, if they were some like angry customer and this and that and the other. And I, I got him on that one time. But, uh, you know, the funny moments I do remember is I, um, gosh, I used to try to tape his phone down. So when he ever answered, he'd be like, hello, hello. And he'd say, damn phone, slam it back down on, on the hook. And the... Oh, the, I know what you're talking about, the, the little... The little, little button, button. Yeah. that hangs up on people yeah. is all pressed down. <laughs> For like three days, he's yelling at Jamie in the office, I need a new damn phone, you better call Comcast, get this piece of shit out of my office, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? He's just yeah. all reared up because he can't answer the phone. Yeah. And I let this go for three days. I felt so bad oh, man. because like there were some important calls he was yeah. missing. But I was like, I'm getting his ass this time. Yeah. If he would have just played into one of the prank phone calls, I would have never done that. Right. But <laughs> hey, it is what it is. So uh, I did all kinds of stuff like that. Did man. you tell him? Did you ever tell him? That Hell you no. <laughs> He's, he knows now. <laughs> he, knows now. <laughs> he didn't before, dude. That's yeah, so he was. Great. uh he was, a, he was a different bird, that's Maybe for that's sure. What, you're responsible for half of Comcast's bad rating right you now. You ain't kidding, bro. yeah. All them reviews they get online. Sorry, Comcast. <laughs> that's crazy. One of them's for me. <laughs> that's that's awesome, dude. Yeah, man. So, but so, life's wild, though. It is, man. You just never know. Yeah. You and, never and know. You don't, man. You don't. And, and, you know, life's constant. Like I said, like we started this conversation, I'm telling you, like, the one thing you can count on is that there's going to be challenges. There's going to oh, be yeah. things. Like, when people goal set, I never understand why they're acting as if nothing's going to get in the way. Like, you need to plan for that. <laughs> yeah so much more than you're actually playing like you need to consider that more than you need to consider anything about your goal what can stop you yeah prepare what, for the worst hope what, for the best right like what what out there could possibly stop you from reaching this goal yeah and then plan for those things. damn right because it's it, gonna happen it's right. a, it's i'm trying inevitable. to lose weight that bag of sour patch kids that always gets me at wawa that's gonna stop me from Yo, doing this you know same what i mean here <laughs> sour <laughs> patch we need a brand deal <laughs> for real <laughs> Both so, of us. <laughs> so that's what's next. I was about to ask you what's next, but now I know it's a Sour Patch deal. No, um, I got that. That'd be legit. <laughs> for real. All right. But listen, you know, I'm going to need something off of that because it started here. I'll give you a cut. <laughs> just a they heard bags. it here. Just a couple bags every I got you. Then. I'll give you a whole pallet. The watermelon only, though, because I don't fool with the rest. All right. I, I fool with both. Okay, cool. So I'm down with it. All right. So what is, what's in the future? Like, what what is something that you're working on right now that you're like, so it's so far out there that you haven't even discussed it with anybody. Is there, is there anything? Oh, dude, there? there's all right. So my team and I, uh, there's a lot of discussion. So my content on YouTube, I, I won't always do haunted stuff. Right. I won't always do abandoned stuff. I, I feel like, uh, as, as I've just kind of grown up on YouTube, it's like everything I've ever known. You know, I go like, I don't watch TV. I literally pay, you know, Comcast to hell with you guys. I pay. It's multiple. Like, for them, by the way. Yeah. Them are good. I pay for, you know, TV I don't even watch. Yeah. But I, you know, they bundle that shit with the internet and all. Yeah. Um, but man, I, I, I grew up on YouTube, so I, I see how content has changed with creators. Like Logan Paul has made a huge transition to mm -hmm. something way bigger than he ever thought. Right. He was a daily vlogger, blew up. Um, and, and that's the thing that I, I, I look at and I talk to my team all the time. I'm like, I don't want that blow up moment. I don't yeah. because for every rise, there is a fall mm -hmm. and the faster you rise, the faster you will fall. It that's is right. completely inevitable. It's going to happen. So like you said, prepare for it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, they get up there and, oh yeah, I've got this and that and the other and all these people. And that's great. But how are you going to keep those people? How are you going to keep their attention? So my content is going to change at some point in time when that day is, I don't know, but I already have 
the content that I'm going towards. Nobody's doing this on the internet yet, so I'm going to be kind of one of the first people. But when I transition, it you know, you have these transitional phases. So we have phase A, B, and C. Now, it's not necessarily C being bad. Right. C is just down the alphabet. That's right. all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we're right now in like phase like lowercase a. Okay. Uh, uppercase A, then B and C are coming soon. But yeah. those plans are a lot to do with um, more of fun stuff instead of like thrill-seeking stuff, okay. like more stunts and stuff like that that gotcha. I, I like doing. Like. Like there's a property I'm looking at with the pond on it and it's got a lot of acreage and like, I'm going to send a car off in that pond. I'm going to send a, probably a Greyhound bus in that pond. Like you got to think about, you have to create content that is harder for everyone else to recreate. Yeah. Not everybody has the funds the resources, yeah. to buy a Greyhound bus and send that bitch into a pond or something crazy. Right. So on, on YouTube, it is like, it is a everlasting battle between YouTubers. Right. Like we all love each other, but we love to hate each other too. I, I don't get into the whole drama shit. Like, I don't care about that. Like, I don't, if you're doing great, that's awesome. Yeah. Do you, you copy my content. I don't care. Like yeah. it, it's, it doesn't matter to me, yeah. but everybody is doing this. Right. They're all trying to compete for that one top spot. And, uh, you know, I always say this in the car market, there's an ass for every seat. Yeah. And there's a, you know, set of eyes for every video too. That's right. You know, there's a lady that's got a napkin collection that she films on YouTube. I, I went down the YouTube rabbit hole for four or five hours one day, and I was like, "What the? F How did I end up napkin here?" Napkin collection. Nap yeah, she goes to like Brandon all the might have her beat. Let me open the closet in that room <laughs> over there for you. <laughs> like, yo, she goes to Arby's, McDonald's, and if they change the napkins, she like gets a whole bundle of them, and like she's got napkins from like back in '94 oh McDonald's. Like, really? it's that weird, thing? dude. That's like, so well, like, it was a thing for her. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's a napkin collection association anywhere, but if there yeah. is, she's going to be the one who starts that. That's like that's wild. it's it's very weird. But yeah, like that's what that's, do you do? unique that's different but it, again there's a set of eyes for every video right. you may not get crazy views right. like i could do stuff that would get me insane views but right. again i'm not at that point in my career to to do that and right. it, youtube is a career for me yeah of course. um so when i say that to people they're like oh you do youtube for a living like yeah do youtube for a living it's a lot of fun yeah they're like how do you make a living on YouTube? I was like, film videos. Like, it's pretty simple, you yeah, know? Like, you how else do would I? something. <laughs> like, I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I'm yeah. robbing the YouTube vault or something. Like, no, I, I don't just know. Just stand still and that's it. Yeah, yeah. it's it's weird, yeah. man. So it's, but I, I look at this too. Everyone today has the same opportunity to do what I do. Yep. You have a cell phone. You don't have to have a $7,000 camera to go into a haunted location and film. Nope. You don't have to have all the fancy audio equipment. Nope. like. But when you can afford to do it that way and up the quality, your viewers that are early on, they appreciate that. And the people who come on new, they appreciate the quality and stuff. So getting started isn't necessarily about having all the right things. It's just about getting started and doing it. Yeah. Like the janitor story. Right. Like I, I would, if I was a janitor, I'd do it. Yep. And you that's know? what I'm saying. Like, like it's, it, I tell people all the time, it's like, just doc, you're, you're already doing cool shit. Right. Like you're doing cool shit every single day. Exactly. Right? Document it. Yeah. Fucking document it and right. tell people about it and talk your, talk your way through it. People want to peek into your life anyway. Bingo. So so Look, it's so crazy. I got a question for that's, you. Though. That's Go the ahead. thing you got to do. Cl close on your point, though. because No, I, I was okay. saying like that's that's what you have to do. Just yeah. do it. Just do it. Yeah, I know. Now, Gosh, damn. That's another plug, Nike. But hey, no, I'm just saying. They never got Nike on, do they? <laughs> no, but, um, but uh, I wanted to ask you, because I didn't ask you this last time. What? So oh, what gosh. do you think? All right, two things. There's two two-part question. Yeah. Right. What's the craziest thing that you put on camera? Okay. <laughs> Period. All right. That means it could have been released. It could have not been released. What's the craziest thing you put on camera? I've got some weird shit on camera. I'll okay. put it to you that way. You got to tell us something, man. Come up with oh, something. Oh, <laughs> shit. It's about to go X rated right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got no filter. Um, you ever filmed yourself? doing a rather fun and pleasurable activity and then you look at yourself and you're like what the fuck is going on <laughs> you're like flopping around like not how i imagined this no no i was like i thought i had better form than this it looked like <laughs> who 
horrible. It looked like I was a fish out of water. That's so great. Like, I don't know. Yeah, you figured you were going to be like the fucking Olympian looking like oh. fucking. Yeah. And uh, oh, I, I, I was I was meant for adult entertainment. And then you see yourself and I'm like, right. I'm not meant for that. Why am I doing that? <laughs> yeah, that's weird. <laughs> I'm serious. That is that. That's probably. It's relatable. All right, really, so you have that same type really of story. Looking for it not. Yeah, you guys too. Yeah, I'll probably have some weird stuff, right? Yeah. We all do. We all do weird stuff. We're yeah. all into weird stuff, you know? All right, so what about... All right, I'm down content, for questions like this. Yeah. This is good shit yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, so content that you've released and put out there, right? I know that you've deleted videos before, right? <laughs> yeah, I so, do. <laughs> all right, so, so what's... Tell us about one that you posted and deleted, Ooh. and why did you have to delete it? All right, so... Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> This is gonna get me in trouble again because it's hard. <laughs> All right, so I got hey, in I trouble asked you before the show. Yeah, yeah it's true that. Now, yo, I like questions like this. This is good for people. Um, so I uh, I filmed the video. I was trespassing. Owner of the property got with his attorney. Sent me a cease and desist letter. I took it down for three months. I privated the video and then I just like put it. <laughs> I like unprivated it and nobody said anything yet. So. Shout out to you. Go ahead and send another letter. I'll officially delete it this time. <laughs> you know, so it, it, that that's uh, yeah, yeah so it's not fun because of what you're doing. Like you, you run that risk, right? Because Absolutely. like it's what's cool is because I, you could tell through your content that it's a general, it's a excuse me, not general, genuine interest in those properties. Right? Oh yeah. It's like it's not you're not going there because of this. You're no. saying, listen, I'm genuinely interested in doing this. By the way, let me document all of it. Bingo. Them. Right. Yeah. So so all right, in doing so, right, you find yourself in yep. situations <laughs> where you might not have been invited. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So so you, you, many a times, yeah. dude. Many a times. So you talked about like these SD cards and being able to remove an SD card oh, pretty fast. Oh man, I'm the master at that. Yeah? Yeah. Like a magician. So Absolute like, master. So he's doing card tricks, guys, and it's not playing cards. <laughs> this is not playing cards. <laughs> this is playing SD cards. Yeah. This is what this is. So uh, I've got this thing, like if we're somewhere we're not supposed to be, which you know kind of happens sometimes, yeah, of or sometimes we genuinely don't know that we're not allowed there. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. My theory is no sign, no problem. That's right. Even though there is a problem. I want forgiveness, <laughs> not permission. Bingo. <laughs> All right, so um, there's those little Apple trackers. I don't even know what they're called, but I got about uh, a dozen of them now. And what I'll do is there's a little, there's a silicone SD uh, holder. Right. And oh, yeah. like you so peel the back of it off. Yeah. You know how like you have the credit cards linked back to people's cell phone cases? Mm -hmm. It's for one for like an SD card. So I've got that on that little Apple tracker. Well, nine times out of 10, if you ever get detained or like, you know, the owner of the property wants the footage or something like that, I'll film for a minute walking up to the property. And that's my little SD card that I'll slip back into the camera if somebody comes up. Yeah. I'm not one to film an interaction. Yeah. They get millions of views doing that, but there's no set in stone way that I'm going to, you know, you're losing a lot of money when you don't post a video. So right. it's, it's a little rough, but, yeah. um, but yeah, I, I can swap an SD card out with the dummy one quick, so fast, like quick. That's so funny. Like, quick. like but you have to, you don't know about yeah. until you do something like this. Yep. Right. And then and you I, realize how real it is. I haven't had to do this in about two years. I, I, I kind of stay away from the whole trespassing. When I first started, I didn't give a damn. I was going, I was trespassing. It didn't matter. I was going, like, if that place was abandoned and it looked cool enough to be in a video, I'm oh, yeah. trekking across the field. Yeah. Uh, so Half we, of your videos, I feel like, are just scenes yeah. from The Walking Dead where they're just It like, looks like yeah, it. Yeah, dude. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. You have people, uh, we have problems with the homeless people sometimes where they get real angry and there's, there's a lot of risk. Yeah. I mean, the videos that you get to see are all scary and fun, but yeah, there's a risk. Yeah, of course. Comes associated. Right, so you, you talked about the Greyhound bus and a car. Like, what is one thing that you know that you're going to do one day that's going to go on camera that you just, like, absolutely can't wait to do? Like, is that Oh, it? can't like, wait to do. Okay. Yeah. Um, like, but you just know it's, like, something that's that's a few years away or something like that. Anything out there? I mean, the Greyhound bus is cool. I can't wait to see that. Yeah, that's content there. There is an idea um, that I have. It's going to push a lot of buttons, though. Okay. That's the problem. But you have to be borderline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, not, not, I, I don't mean confrontational in a bad or negative right. way, but you, you kind of got to be a little controversial with your content. Like, you know, if somebody gets hurt while filming the video, you kind of still have to upload it. So, like, everybody around me, they, they sign, uh, like, all Waivers, these forms. Yeah, like, like if, if, if uh, you get killed, 
doing this shit with me. It ain't on me. It's on you. Right. Um, so you got to protect yourself in those aspects. But there's one video idea that I would absolutely love to say. But if I say it, it's going to be duplicated 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's coming in the next year. Okay. And it's. All right. well, stay tuned, everybody. And, we'll and, have them back after. And what I'll do is when I film that, I'll come back here. You can release this podcast. And then I'll release that video the next day. And then. Okay. We'll go on. All right. Cool. But it's too good. And it, it's kind of easy to duplicate, so I'm afraid to say it on Yeah. Here. Okay, that's fair. No, I like that. Protect it, man. I want you to keep that. So But you it, gotta have that. Yeah. So it's so cool. By the way, I like I know you jokingly invited me last time to do one of the I yeah. definitely would, by the way, in the moment that it makes sense. Yeah, I definitely, definitely come and fucking spend the night in a haunted place. It's cool, dude. I, you know, I want to get Sometimes. kicked out and have to hide an SD card and all that. So um, <laughs> that's not as fun as it sounds, dude. <laughs> this is not as good as what it no, sounds. No, no, it's just the, it sounds the, fun on the surface, but then when you're in the moment, man, your heart's like beating out of your chest. Like I actually uh, did an abandoned military base one time. That was dumb, really? dumb, 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 dumb. Yep. And you weren't able to release any of that content? I did. I released uh, it. And okay. people are like, uh, are you stupid? And I'm like, I guess so, yeah. Probably, yeah. So, there's a, I mean, there's got to be a little bit of that in wood. There for all of us. Somebody's going to come knock on my door one day and be like, why the fuck were you in there? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. All right, dude. So um, we could talk all day. We always do this oh, yeah. when we get together. So a um, couple of things that we always ask. I asked this question last time, but hopefully you got a different answer. Name a time, whether it be in content creation or in business or whatever, where, you know, you really know that you went a well above the call of duty, right? Like whatever the norm was, whatever the standard was, you went well above and beyond to either achieve something that you were after or to satisfy a customer or to do, you know, anything, whether it be personal or business. Go on the extra mile. Uh, yeah, go on the extra mile. I got a story perfect for this. There was a lady who bought a car from the auction. Now, obviously, we don't own any of the cars at the auction. We're right, the middleman. Yeah. Yep. So a dealer brings a car to the auction. This lady buys that vehicle. And sometimes bad stuff happens right bad stuff's gonna happen in, in any time <clears throat> she bought this car she makes it south of uh farmington in between greenwood and farmington pull and uh the car caught on fire burnt to the ground all right wow this was a nine thousand dollar car mm. okay we don't own it no i don't know any of the history about it everything sold as Correct. is yeah i could have just said hey listen you know Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, You're definitely not responsible. Yeah, I'm not responsible in yeah. any any form. Um, but here's what happened. She called the office. I happened to answer the phone what? that Thursday night. It was Thursday night. The auction's still going yeah. on. Oh, shoot. like she bought it, ta put the temporary tag. She's going home. Right. The auction is still happening. And I picked up the phone for some weird reason. I said Delaware Auto Exchange, CJ, blah blah blah. She told me the situation. I said, stay right there. I'll I'll be there in about 15 minutes. So I go into my office, I grab a check out of the, uh, from my operational account and I get in my truck. I didn't say anything to anybody. I go straight down. My staff was like, where the fuck is CJ at? We got questions or right. like people want to see the him. Auction. Middle yeah. of the auction. I, I drive straight down there. <laughs> yeah. While I'm driving there, I call the dealer that sold this car through the auction. I said, Hey, uh, it wasn't a private, it was a dealer. Okay, yeah. Cool. He said, uh, um, basically not my problem. She can kiss my ass. I said, well, you can kiss my ass now because you're not dealing another car through the auction. If you're not going to take responsibility for this or at least a little bit of sympathy, right? you're, you're going to tell the lady basically screw off. Right. I don't have any time for you, nor do I want you serving any type of vehicle through here to right. any of my customers that I work hard to build a yeah. reputation with. Oh, there's a lot to that part of the conversation that we'll come back to. I'll yeah. let you finish. So yeah. I get there. Uh, I write her a $9,000 check or whatever the total was. I looked at her bill of sale right. that she had. <clears throat> I gave her that exact total. And I said, I'm very sorry this happened. She's like, honey, it's not your fault. You shouldn't be paying me, blah, blah, blah. I'll just go after the seller. and blah. I'm like, no, no, no. It's not going to work that way. I said, take this check. Go cash it in the morning. Either come back and see me or, you, or we never speak again. But this is the right thing to do. 100%. You know what I mean? She uh, and in the situation that later came about, she she was in a very tough spot. Yeah. You know what I mean? She wanted a vehicle. This was like a lot of money for yeah. $9,000 is a lot of money. Heck yeah, it you is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh you know, you never I never know somebody's circumstances. Right. So. And I could have easily done this. Wipe my hands clean. Hey, ma'am, we can't do anything. We don't own the car. Right. But in this certain instance, I can't do that all the time, but in yeah. this certain instance, I I I did what I thought was right and I took a $9,000 hit. I yeah. went the extra mile to make sure that this person didn't get screwed, even though I had nothing to do with it. 
Yeah. So that, know? that's huge for a, a bunch of reasons. One, you know, obviously we have laws in place for certain reasons, right? To protect us yep. as business owners, people oh, are exactly. trying to take advantage all the time, right? Unfortunately, they, they yeah. use a business as a cover up yeah. to screw people. Yep. That's and right. that's messed up. And they don't realize that there is an individual behind it all, right? Mm -hmm. That, you know, that ends up having to take the, the brunt of it. So there's two things there that really, A, obviously, you know, I commend you for the way that you handled it because there, that. there is a time where you can look at things and say, okay, yeah, th this isn't our responsibility, right? And yep. know that that what is not legally your responsibility and was not morally correct do not align right then you have to go with what's morally correct and it Thank sounds you. like that dealer right like never even considered what's morally nope. correct not at all and so as a result you know what what kind of business position should would that person want to be in when he screws over the person that's running an auction where he has to take most of his traded in vehicles like it beats me, dude. Like that doesn't make any sense. To if me. he would have had like sympathy, right? I'd have been cool with it. Yeah, I really would have. Like but I, it, I, ideal it, situation, there would be like, okay, neither one of us are responsible. Let's match it. Let's fucking help this one. Absolutely. Let's do the right thing. Yep. And the only way to do the right thing is to do the right things. Right. Yeah. So I, I looked at that as like a learning lesson. I'm like, all right, now I know who I'm dealing with. Now, with but guy. you shared that with your team, right? Like, oh yeah. Right. So big discussion. So then yeah. Here's what happens, right? Like this is what's so cool. And I did this with, with bright side too. And I really take a lot of pride in this. There was, there's very few times where my team had to call me and ask me, Hey, look, this is what we came across on this home. Right. What should we do? They never had to ask that question. Why? Because the standard was always, Bingo. what's the right thing to do? Yep. Right? We so no matter what happens, no matter what's going on on the roof, okay, we're yep. not considering what's cheaper. Right. We're not considering what's convenient. We're not considering what's legally, what we're legally obligated to do. Right. What is the right thing? And that's what we do every Dude, single time. Dude, that goes time. a long way, though. Yeah, and so what ended up happening, and, and the guys seen this on our, on our investment properties when we partner with with subs, right, for for investment properties when yep. we're doing the work on them, the same thing. Like, listen, if I have an electrician call me and say, hey, listen, this is what we can do, there's a couple of options. No, there's not. What would you do if this was your home? Bingo, do that's that. That's the only option. Yep. Every single time, if you ever have this question in the future on any of my properties, know that that's always going to be the answer. Yep. Because there's not a bunch do of it options. Right. There's Don't one do it option. All. What is the right thing to do? Yes. Yeah. And so when you set that precedent, especially with your team like that, man, it's by example, nonetheless, Yeah. it's huge because it makes a, the decision-making process so much easier for the people exactly. that you end up delegating to later. Well, it's, it's, it's at the end of the day, you only have your reputation. Yeah. I mean, for me. Or, like, or karma. That's all it is. Yeah. Right? yeah. I mean, you look at it that way too, yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you're yep. right. Reputation, obviously, but... What about the fact that, listen, if you believe in what I, we, I like what you said earlier when we were, we were on the conversation of your father and you mentioned God, but whatever it is that you believe in out there, it's like this, right? If you believe that there is something controlling the balance of good and bad, right? Yep. Like then understand that when situations like that come up, you do good and that lady Bingo. might not ever come back and do anything great for you. No. Nope. But somehow, some way, it will be returned to you through somebody else's actions or right. opportunities. Yep. There is, and if you don't believe in that, then you're lost. Oh, well, you're an idiot. Yeah. So <laughs> like, and, and not to be mean, but right. like, gosh, damn, how can you not? Right. And and there's you do good, behind, you get good. Right. And there's the theories behind just the the simple attraction of positivity and good right when you do good the energy yeah. around you is that too, and right? and also like people can sense that like people can sense an energy all right is this this guy a scumbag is he uh truthful and it's it's tough sometimes to like judge a book by its cover but like just the vibe just the the vibe you have when you meet somebody is so so important yeah like i judge everything off the vibe i get from you more or less than what I'm seeing and hearing right now, like how are you interacting with everyone else? And that, that just says a lot about people, right, you know, like everybody's like, Oh, you can't profile people. Well, you can't profile anybody. We right. don't know what they're walking through or anything like that. But when you start talking to somebody, you can get their vibe. And that's what I'm talking about. Yep. Just because a guy walks in with sweatpants and a ripped shirt, that doesn't mean shit. That guy's probably got more money than most people in, in the suits, room sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Dude, you just don't know. So it, it's bizarre. Um, all right. I want to ask you about one thing before we close out. Yep. Um, and it's only because, man, you had talked about this when we first met. Okay. Yep. So we met at a conference. You and I were both yep. brought we were in speakers, to speak. Yeah. 
and uh, we had never met each other. And honestly, dude, as much of a splash as you and your family were making in this area, I wasn't familiar enough right. with it at all. Um, I knew of the auction, and that was pretty much it. Yeah. But anyway, so so I spoke, and then you spoke after me, and I told my story, which most of, hopefully most of the people that are listening are familiar with. Yep. In the moment where you know I go into court and I'm looking at all this time, and I get blessed in the courtroom with yep. a miracle, right? And you followed up with uh, followed up um, that conversation with a conversation based around forgiveness. Yep. And I want to open up on that a little bit because oh um, yeah, recently forgiveness has just come back more and more it's around me, and I've been embracing different concepts and Damn perspectives right. and things like that. But I had never looked at that situation and thought forgiveness at any point. I just thought it was a mistake or man, he just couldn't recognize me or whatever. But then I started to think about the idea of, could this have been something for himself to forgive so that it wasn't something taking up space in his mind yeah. or in his heart anymore? Yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit, man. Um, forgiveness is oftentimes looked at as a weakness thoughts. I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's weakness at all. I think it's maturity. Like, it's very easy to hold a grudge, but it's even easier and way more fulfilling, at least that when I forgive people, uh, it's pretty fulfilling. Yeah. At the end of the day, why fucking hold that anger in? Yeah. Okay. So what? What are you going to do about it? What uh, Truly, what are you going to do about it? If you're not going to forgive somebody and you're just going to go and like off them or something, what does that do? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I've I had people not do that. No, I, I, I've, yeah. I've actually had yeah. people who've that, threatened that my angry, life. Right. Yeah. 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 They're angry at me for whatever the case might be. And I'm like, is what I did or what I said enough for you to want to kill me? Right. Or, you know, why can't you just forgive people? Like, you know, if somebody cuts me off, I, dude, I used to be oh, terrible with road you know, rage. Yeah, I would, bad. I would love to get out. Now, I can't fight, but I would love to try and whip your ass. I really would. <laughs> but I was not the guy for that job. You know what I mean? Don't call me if you're in a fight. I'll tell you that right now. Um, but, you know, I would always be looking for a fight. And I, I was, you know, I think what it is, is it's in, in a nutshell. It's more of a reflection on what that person's going through oh, of why they can't gosh. forgive rather than the actual act of forgiving somebody. Like, I used to be mad as hell when somebody cuts me off. But now when somebody cuts me off, I'm like, listen, they're either in a, in a rush. Number one, they should have left earlier, yeah. if yeah. that's the case. Sure. Um, or, uh, you know, maybe that person's going through some really deep shit mm -hmm. that I don't know about. Yeah. Yeah, I right? think I think it's I crazy. Mean, I think we take things so personally. Yeah, right? like, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. You know what I mean? We take yep. things so personally. Like that guy would have cut off anybody. This you didn't yeah. cut off CJ. Yeah, he cut off whoever the <laughs> fuck <laughs> was driving. He has no idea who I am. He doesn't you know give I mean? a shit either. You know. But that's the way right. that we take it. Like, how dare he? Right. Cut me off. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. And so, like, for me, I think that's why so many people are stuck in this spot where they can't forgive because they took whatever they this person did so personally. Dude, it's so true. But then, meanwhile, Dude, it's so true. meanwhile, right, that person who just cut you off is still on his way to wherever the fuck he Bingo. was going. Thank you, no mind yep. intention. No, he don't care it's about like you. Road rage in this yeah. scenario is such a perfect analogy it is right too. now because that's exactly what's happening. When people do you wrong, yep. Why is it that they are always doing so good afterwards? They're I so happy. Don't understand. They're off, not paying you <laughs> any mind. They don't care dude, a it's bit so true. about you. Yeah. Yet you are letting them take up so much uh, space. Rent in free, your dude. Mind and in your heart. Rent free. It's wild. Yeah. I read a um, and it was probably an article where they were talking about like holding a grudge against somebody is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. <laughs> Basically, that's literally the best quote ever. Right. It makes it sense. It everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, but like, I, I just couldn't imagine like, like, you know, you talk about like people when they, when they're stuck in this place where they can't forgive, like, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to let them get away with that. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. If, if somebody did something wrong to me, uh, like in the next 10 minutes, there, there's a reason why people do things. Yes. Yeah, that's it. And a lot of times it's not directed at you. No. It's at the situation they're going through. Absolutely. And I understand that, yeah. you know, and there's, but also there's, there's some things, well, this is kind of a different, but like, for instance, um, you know, people that hate your guts, Yep. they still watch. 
Yep. I have people who actually sit there and will take the time to comment on a YouTube video. Right. This fucking video sucks. You should be ashamed uploading this, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, well, you watched the whole thing, so thank you, right. first off. And then yeah. second of all, like, yeah, what's going on? The part you mentioned was 45 minutes in. Right, yeah. <laughs> and and, and <laughs> what, what's going on in your life that you took the time to write a negative comment on YouTube or even, like, see, throw that shade towards somebody? Like, see, I, I think, can't wrap my head I around I think it. there's, you know, there's a connection with all this because I feel like what you just said, right, the people that understand forgiveness and the strength of it, right, all also know that too right they understand yep. that you a they didn't you didn't take it personally because Bingo. you go to this place of consideration like man what's going on in his life that yeah that makes him so sad to be here right. ta targeting me like yeah like, i actually feel for the right. guy a little bit right. or the girl or whoever but that's it man that's that's the like, place i go to like what what exactly have you experienced this week to make you feel that way to lash out at someone you don't know right yeah, or and maybe think, somebody you do know. I think there's a connection to all that. Like you know, there. You know, I got, I'm full of these fucking little examples, but the, I, I the, love it. The other example that was brought up to me that I loved was like when you're when you're uh, holding a grudge against somebody, it's like putting them in a prison, right? Right. And so like when they're in the prison cell, there's him in the prison cell, and then there's you as the guard making sure he doesn't escape. Right. And so when you, when you open that cage and you let him go, guess what? You get freed up too. Right. Now you can go do something more productive. Gosh, damn, dude. That's actually good. I've never heard that, that analogy before, but I like that. To me, that explains it so perfectly because, like, you're you're hurting yourself. Like, when people think about, like, the for, act of forgiveness, they're thinking that they're letting somebody off the hook or they're right. letting them get away with it. They already got away with it. Yeah, they're, they're already living their life. Now let you yep. get away with it. Let you be freed from exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Because they're not thinking about that every exactly. day, but you are. You're living rent-free in someone's head because they don't forgive you I, again. Uh, sometimes that's good, <laughs> and then most of the time it's bad for yeah. that person also involved. Doesn't though, mean like you're gonna invite them to dinner. Oh hell no! Right? No no no. You know what I, mean? I can for I I'm not gonna invite the guy that cut me off for dinner. I'm like <laughs> I I for I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up there to the stoplight and roll my window down and say I forgive you for cutting me off, sir. Let's grab a beer. Yeah, let's go out for dinner <laughs> later. Like, are you kidding me? No, it doesn't have to mean right. that. But forgiving right. somebody and it actually feels good. Yeah, you know. Yep. But again, it's more on, of a right? reflection on them. But. You know, we, we can sit here till we're blue in the face and talk about how forgiveness is important, but it's like talking about it and then not giving steps. I think the only way to do it is this, is to fucking do it. Yep. Just forgive people and yep. tell them directly, not just say, yeah. oh yeah, I forgive that person. Directly go up and say, hey, listen, you remember when this happened? I forgive you for that. Yeah. I feel better now. Let's move on. Yeah. So I, so here's the right? thing. I would slightly disagree, and here's why. The why only reason that? I say that is because, man, you imagine somebody who's like still upset and trying to let go, right? Yep. And then they approach that person and say, I forgive you. And they'll be like, forgive me for what, right? And that's uh, the only reason I say that is because— I didn't think about that. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the good. other person might not— be accountable and responsible for their True. actions enough, right? And now you got this exchange between two people. Yeah. So that's why I always say that forgiveness is not about the other person. Like forgiveness is about you, right? You can forgive somebody. And most of the time, here's the other thing, right? Think about how often we're holding a grudge against somebody who feels like they never did anything wrong. Well, that's true too. Right? You see yeah. what I'm saying? So when you forgive, yeah. when you forgive somebody, A, the grudge was yours. Yeah, it true. wasn't theirs. So now you're <laughs> you're forgiving them yeah. without them ever knowing, which is which is what you needed to do for you anyway. I love that. You know what I mean? And yeah. all the more reason not to invite them over for Hell dinner. Hell yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so. I mean, well, I mean, I guess that does make sense. In in a nutshell, it's like, uh, well, if, if that's the case, I could I could definitely see that. I, I'm yeah. the type of person where, like, if I got a problem with you, yeah, I'm no, either I've not going to say anything, yeah. or I'm damn sure going to approach you and yeah. say, yo, here's the thing. I'm going to forgive you, but don't let it happen again. But I, I, so I've done that too. And I've had successful conversations that way as well. Yeah. Um, and so, but I will tell you that there are probably more people out there that I've forgiven that have no clue that I've forgven them <laughs> than there are that actually know. Yeah, I, I gotta probably say the same. <laughs> now that I, mean? I think about that, they have no idea. They've just gone through life. Oh, they didn't know. Yeah. And probably I've done that to people too. Yeah. We probably pissed off people or hurt yeah. their feelings or whatever the case yeah. might be. And they forgive us silently and we don't know it. Yeah. Because I they don't say so. anything, I but I so. I like it when somebody comes up to me and says, "Hey, I you know you you hurt my feelings." Because then I'm I'm gonna lean into them and be like, "Okay, was this really worth 
getting your feelings hurt over. Right. Did I do something to you that was worth you right. wasting this energy? And hopefully help them in a personal way that way yeah. instead of just being like, ah, oh, fuck you. Yeah, you it's know? so funny you mentioned that, though, because we there are times where we do something to somebody and we don't even know that they, like, Correct. like you know what I mean? Like, I had an exchange with somebody who was a Master Networks member and they were, like, really upset with me and I had no idea why. And what Yikes. it was was I had yeah. posted that that I needed a service, right? I, I was requesting help with something, right? And Oof. their name had been mentioned like 13 times on the post, right? But I'm getting blown up by notifications. Right. And so a few hours have gone by. I've already gotten them to take care of it or, you Correct. know, whatever. And the, the problem is solved. I'm still getting notifications. So I delete the post. They got upset because the exposure they got from the requests... Ah. We're now, I never even connected the dots. I just did it because I was right. getting blown up with notifications. Yeah, yeah. And so they were like, oh, he deleted the post. I guess he didn't want people to think that or, or to see my recommendation on there. And I'm like, what? what? The hell? But like, I, I, I saw their perspective a little bit too. I'm like, yeah, for yeah. just the exposure, I guess I could have left it up there and just turned off my notifications. But I right. want you to know, regardless, it wasn't malicious. I never considered that. And I right. do apologize for deleting it based off of that reason and not getting you the exposure. But here's that's not the reason why I deleted it. Well, at the end of the day, uh, yeah. it's your Facebook page. Right. So if you decide to do something... Uh, you know, again, we live in such a soft ass environment sure, now. Sure, it's fucking. Oh, ridiculous. listen, we're not going to please everybody, but no. I do think there is some value in like having conversations sometimes. So again, yeah. when I go back to what you were saying about like going to the person yep. and forgiving them or whatever, you might gain perspective in that conversation. It just totally. Uh, it just depends on you're just thinking the maturity about it a different of both way. parties. You know, yeah. you hope that the other person's as, mat as yeah. mature as you are. Definitely, bro. We could go all day. Fucking A. And I you know what we should do? It. We should do like a three-hour podcast one day. Let's fucking do it. And well, we're going mean, like to... We're already an hour and a half hard in. Hard-hitting questions. We're give up now. How are we really? Yeah, bro. Holy shit. But I'm telling you, it's getting a little warm in here. You ain't bullshit. <laughs> I'm sweating. Starting to. longer. We're going to need to take a break for Yeah, you're not you kidding, I mean? man. <laughs> but also, I was thinking about this, too. Maybe uh, maybe I get some of my fans involved, and like they love juicy questions, so I yeah. maybe get like... We got a couple of good ones today. Yeah, send them over, and then if you all want, comment below. What questions do you want? want to ask me next time Hell yeah, man. and then you deliver those messages some we're gonna skip <laughs> no we're not skipping any <laughs> we're not skipping any. no we don't skip any <laughs> send them to me guys. that's what a podcast is about we don't put up a front you all like the video thing like, yeah I, i'm not right, dude. i did it who cares yeah. yep Absolutely. everybody's done something weird Absolutely. it is funny because when i first did this i started asking people after the show i was like is there anything that you did you don't want me to air right and and i thought like at first i was like i thought i was doing everybody a courtesy and so then like i got a couple of people that were like this part i don't want you to i don't want you to air and i was like all right oh, that's now, a juicy so part, that's when though. i started asking the questions up front yeah more. i'm like is there anything you want me to stay away from right right, right. which it's great to have a guest like you who's super transparent like you could ask me fucking anything yeah i don't care um but there are times where i have somebody on there like don't <laughs> don't talk about this particular thing my wife's gonna yeah. watch this podcast <laughs> yeah. you yeah. can't ask me this question or yeah. something that's why i'm not it's married <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> But but at the same time, I'm like most of my most of my guests, I would go back and I'd ask them. I'd be like, "Is there anything that you want me to cut out?" They're like, "Fuck no, send it." Exactly. Like, Hell go. yeah, that's the way it should I was be. Like, that's the way I want. It's a it. podcast. All man. right, so let's let's start closing out. I do want people to make sure that they can follow you. Most of the people cool. watching probably know where to find you. Oh if yeah. They search, if you search his name, I promise you, you're gonna find most of it. But is there any particular links, places you want uh, them to go just to? Just go to YouTube. Type yep. in my name, CJ Faison. Uh, that's my main channel, and then CJ Faison Vlogs is my second channel, and that's where I put all like the business stuff, wild stuff, like just gotcha. Every okay. everything that doesn't make sense basically right. is on there. So for those of you who are watching this on video, that stuff will be on the screen. For those that you, those of you that are on audio, can you say it just one more time for yep. them so they make sure they got CJ Faison? And my last name is spelled weird. It's F is in Frank, A I S is in Sam, O N is in Nancy. So. All right, cool. That's what man. I have to say every time I'm on the phone. Yeah, we're just going to keep him coming back. Like, we're going to keep him coming back, like, every couple months or so, okay? So we're just gonna we'll get on a schedule. In. Yeah. All right, cool, man. Well, listen, thank you so much, Appreciate man, for it, rocking dude. with us today, bro. Appreciate it. This is sick. You. Love this, the new podcast studio, too. Congrats on this. It's dope, man. I'm, I'm really happy with it. And a lot of other podcasts are enjoying this space, too, which is so cool, too. Because, hey, there you we know, go. You, you talk about, like, the, the mindset of the people that are doing something similar to what you're doing content-wise. Yeah, yeah. But, like, how much of that has been... In, 
you were an inspiration to all these people yeah. that are doing something that they wanted to do too. And so it's kind of cool to have a place like this where people can can open Absolutely. up and get on. Get on uh, well, kudos podcast. to you, man, because not many people are doing this and allowing opening up their own studio to let other people do this so well, hopefully the people listening start doing their own right now let's go guys thanks for being on the show cj your success is on the other side of your comfort zone see that's the difference between me and those other guys i wanted it more than they did i wanted it enough to get uncomfortable i wanted it enough to go the extra mile do you want it bad enough do you want it bad enough to go the extra mile